Hey, what's going on guys? I'm Silent Core, and welcome to episode 2 of uh, my How to Twitch series. If you haven't already seen episode 1, I'll put a link to that on screen and at the top of the description. So I'd really advise watching that first if you haven't already seen it. And uh, also congratulations to the three people on screen. I've picked these three people as winners from the last episode to win an X Split license each. So be sure to check your YouTube inbox for your code. And I also have another three licenses to give away to you guys on this video. So to enter the draw, all you have to do is just leave a comment and let me know why you want one and I'll pick three people in the next episode. I also wrote to Aver Media and told them I was doing this series and asked them if they wanted to support it and they very very kindly gave me a capture card which I'm allowed to give to one of you guys. So there'll also be a click to tweet thing in the description if you want a chance at winning one of those too. In this episode I'm going to be going over equipment, I'm going to be showing you exactly what you need to get started and I'll also have an Amazon link to everything I mention in this video so you can check it on Amazon, you read the product descriptions, see what the current price is for just everything I talk about. So before you start live streaming, you'll want to ensure you have the necessary equipment to do the job and maybe actually invest a little bit of money into it if you want to take it really seriously. First one is a fast computer. If your computer struggles to play the game smoothly alone, it's really going to struggle to be able to play a game and live stream at the same time. So you'll want a decent processor and RAM to run a quality stream and it completely depends on what game you're playing and how intensive it'll be, but I recommend something between 4 to 8 gigabytes of RAM would be a good amount. Next, and almost just as important, is a fast and reliable internet connection. If you visit speedtest.net you can actually test your internet connection, and uh, the important one to note is your upload speed. This is the speeds at my parents' house, unfortunately fibre isn't available in my area so I'm left with a disappointing 1 megabyte upload. You'll want at least 3 megabyte upload for a solid stream, however if your upload is similar to mine it's not the end of the world, you still can live stream with a slower upload um, in a slightly quali lower quality stream and you can also tweak some settings in your broadcaster to help that. I'm going to be covering this in the next episode where I show you guys in depth how to actually use the broadcasting software. And it's also important to make sure your internet connection is stable enough, make sure it's not disconnecting, nobody really wants to watch a live stream that keeps cutting in and out. I remember my internet used to have a problem where if anybody phoned the house and the house phone got answered, it would cut off the internet for a few seconds which was really weird and frustrating, but thankfully that got fixed. Next is some games to livestream, and it's usually not as easy as just picking a game to livestream, you want to do a little bit of research on it first. So if you go to the Twitch directory page, you'll see a list of all the games that are being viewed on Twitch in chronicle order of their concurrent viewers, so that's people currently watching uh, Twitch live. There's a few familiar faces, League and Legends and Dota are usually found in the top three, but the order is generally decided by what big channels are currently live streaming that game. For example, if Syndicate starts streaming live streaming DayZ, there's a good chance DayZ is going to be at a higher spot than its usual orderings. This is the same for many big live streamers. You'll also notice large Twitch channels actually regularly change games, they sometimes play really really old games or small fun indie games. Now I would not recommend doing this if you're just starting off. To start your live streaming channel you're much better off specialising into one game and actually using that one game to grow your audience from there, so do pick your game wisely. It's worth noting that concurrent viewers on a game is sometimes quite a good indication of that game's health. So if you notice a game is always moving down the Twitch charts with less and less concurrent viewers each day, you know that game is probably maybe dying out. Next is a quality microphone, and I believe investing in a quality microphone is totally worth it. Watching a live stream with bad audio sound is just really a bad experience. You'll have a ton of options when it comes to microphones, and it's important to get something that works for you. I actually went through a period of buying and returning microphones and headsets until I found the perfect ones that work for me. You'll also have to tweak your audio setup depending on your voice. Some people speak quite quietly and other people like to shout a lot when they live stream, so you'll need to get something that works for you. Headsets are great, they're easy to set up and use, they can have a, a nice clear audio sound and they can let you listen to the in-game sound while you're broadcasting. If you're looking for a cheap headset to get started, I'd highly recommend the Microsoft Live Chat headset. It's got great audio quality for such a cheap headset and it's lasted me over two years and I still sometimes use it. I'll have an Amazon link below if you want to check that one out. Condenser microphones are also a great option, but they do come at a bit of a price. I've used the Blue Snowball for about a year and that's currently what I'm recording my voice on now, so it's uh, done me very well. But there's also the Blue Yeti and the AT2020, I'll put links to all of those in the description. And next is a webcam! So um, this one's obviously optional, it's a big decision to choose to want to put your image out there on the internet. It took me several years of posting YouTube videos before I wanted to show my face on the internet. Uh, but webcams are really important, they do let your viewers see who you are, they get to know your personality better, 
And uh, kind of like what I'm doing now, I don't have to use webcam for these videos, but I feel it just makes them that little bit more personal for you guys. Webcams can also really help at developing more personal relationships with your viewers, and much more personal than say, just watching a game screen. I thought I'd also mention that most webcams do have inbuilt microphones into them, and while it might sound like two birds with one stone to use that audio from it, the audio sound isn't really that great, so I'd really recommend getting a standalone microphone or a headset to broadcast your voice and just disable the microphone on the webcam. And the last requirement to make it all happen, you're going to need some broadcasting software. Now there are a few choices when it comes to software, but I'm going to stick to the main two, which are XSplit Broadcaster and OBS. They both can be used free, however XSplit does have also a premium version that you can pay for uh, to get the full version, and it does come with quite a few advantages over using a free one, which I'm going to be showing you in the next episode. Remember, if you want to be entered into the draw to win an XSplit license code, all you have to do is just leave a comment on this video, let me know why you want one, and I'll choose three people. You don't have to subscribe or like the video, although that is much appreciated, you don't have to do it to enter. If you'll join me in the next episode, I'm going to be diving into broadcasting software and getting into the sort of nitty gritty stuff of uh, how to optimise your settings for live streaming, how to get those tweak those settings in your broadcaster to be able to live stream games well. Thank you all for watching, I hope you have a great day, and I'll see you in my next video.